back at y'all with some more boxing news and updates. You already know this your boy Love When I Hate One. Let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. All right, now you got Devin Haney and Regis Progre both ready to take each other's heads off. And I'm going to name several reasons why I feel like this fight is going to happen next. But I also want to talk about why I feel like this is still a 50-50 fight. I know a lot of people seen Regis last fight and they like, man, he is food for Devin Haney. But the truth of the matter is, I'm not looking at it like that. Not only you can't use the triangle theory in boxing, it's some more facts to this. Number one, I told you guys, Zilla is a hard puncher. He can box. He's a solid opponent. Regis better not be sleeping on this dude. Another thing is, Zarilla, that dude got crack. He dropped Regis Progray in this fight. And I always known Regis to have a chin. So Regis could say all this stuff after the fight saying I could have did better, yada, yada, yada. The truth of the matter is, the opponent that you was facing, you just didn't want to get knocked out and embarrassed in your hometown. You guys, Devin Haney do not have that type of power. And let's not forget, Regis did drop and hurt this dude. Almost made him do a somersault in a damn ring. We don't know if Devin Haney can take those type of punches from Regis. Now, don't get it twisted. We all know if Devin Haney fights the perfect fight, he can beat Regis because his defense is decent. But Devin Haney be getting hit every fight, y'all. But it's funny when it comes down to Regis because just two weeks ago, I would just say before Tio Fimo beat Josh Taylor, it was looking like the guy to beat and the guy that was the monster at the division, shit, some people had him the boogeyman at the division, was Regis Progre. You see how boxing work and how the narrative has changed that fast? Now it was Tio and Regis look like the weak link. Other than the Roley Romero, but us real boxing fans, we know he got a belt, but we don't even count him. But the true 140 pounders is looking like Regis is a weak link right now. It's crazy because Devin Haney is not even a 140 pounder yet, and they got him over Regis Progre. Now, nah, y'all tripping. Don't let performances fool you because Devin Haney didn't look spectacular in his last fight. With that being said, the reason I feel like this fight is definitely going to happen because, number one, Eddie Hearn said it. That's the fight he wants to make next for both guys. Not only that, they're both on the zone. That fight is extremely easy to make, y'all. So I don't see Devin Haney risking it with a Shakur Stevenson who's on the other side of the street. Not only that, that's a way harder fight than Regis Progre. Because one thing about Regis Progre, he gets hit, and you know he's not going to do what you can do, if not better. Like I told you guys, Shakur Stevenson could do everything Devin Haney could do in that square circle, if not better. Those are the dangerous fighters out there, y'all. Another thing is, Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney are still young, so they could always get back to each other. I know they both feel that way. Well, not Shakur. He wants to fight ASAP, but Devin Haney. And Eddie Hearn, I know they like, okay, we'll get to Shakur later. Regis is 34, going on 35, y'all. He's not no spring chicken. But I feel like that's the fight they need to make immediately. Not only that, I feel like Regis is still a good fighter. And I don't feel like he has a whole bunch of mileage on him. So that's not going to play a factor, really, when it comes down to the age. But I just feel like he needs to get all these fights ASAP. Because next minute you know it, Regis is going to be pushing 40. So we definitely got to take these type of things into consideration, y'all. And that's my thoughts on this shit. I am out.